You may have heard about the topic of modding in Project Cars 2. Although modding is nothing new to the sim racing genre, it tends to go unheard of in the Project Cars community, as many people tend to stick to and are happy with the vanilla game. That's completely understandable, and I was the exact same way only until I recently took upon the interest. Modding is well capable of drastically expanding the boundaries of the game, and Project Cars 2 is no exception. However, the process is a little different than you may think. Games like BMG or Asoto Corsa were developed with the strong intent of being modded by the community. Thus, tools and features are widely attainable within the franchise. In Project Cars 2, however, you need to dig a little deeper. And let me just get this out of the way. No, you cannot download mods if you're playing on a console such as Xbox or PlayStation. Unfortunately, there's no way that I know of at this moment to access the proper files and install the right applications on a console. Sorry, but this method is solely for PC users. Also, at first it may seem like a difficult task, and I thought so too at first. But with the help of a good friend, I was able to easily obtain the know-how needed to go through with it. Plus, I'm not exactly the most tech-savvy person in the world, so this is likely going to be a much easier task for most of your viewers. Today, I'm going to cover the step-by-step -step process of installing mods to Project Cars 2. So before we get started, you are going to have to download some tools in this video. Also, every tool or feature I use in this video will be linked in the description below for download. So first, you're going to need an application that allows you to extract files from an RER file. Uh, I recommend 7-Zip. This is the one I used. You can find this on the Microsoft Store or the internet if you don't like downloading stuff from the Microsoft Store for whatever reason. Next, you're going to want to install the boot files for Project Cars 2. I have the link right here. So, this download might take a little while. It wasn't exceptionally long for me, but I understand it varies across devices. But basically, the boot files are the original files for the game, as in the files that contain all the values and statistics of each vehicle and stuff like that. So, we're going to use these files to add the values of the mod we will be adding to the game, which I'll get to later. Once you have this downloaded, you're actually going to go to the Project Cars Steam files. You do that by going to File Explorer, this PC, your drive, it could be different for other people. Program files, make sure it's times 86 you don't want to go to the normal program files. So Program Files, scroll down to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Project Cars 2, and now you're going to create a mods folder. So this is the folder where you're actually going to put all the mods and your boot files in. Now you're going to actually want to open your boot files. You'll do this by right clicking and going to open with. And you're going to open it with the application you downloaded for opening RER files. Mine of course is 7-Zip. You'll open this up and what you want to do is just carry this folder to mods. Now I'm not going to do it on my PC because I already have it in there of course, so do that real quick and it should appear in your mods folder. Here's mine, I already have it in here. And just keep it like that for now. So next we're going to need to download the JSGME mod enabler. This is actually going to activate the mods in a future step. So I actually already have this installed on my computer, so I'm not going to run you through the little process to install it. It's very easy, you just hit next a few times and it should be installed. But anyway, all you're going to do is, after you have it installed, open up your Project Cars common folder as we saw earlier. Here's our newly created mods folder we just made. And you'll have your File Explorer app right here open with your uh, JSGME application you just installed. And all you're going to do is just drag the JSGME application right into an um, empty space right over here. And it should appear in your Project Cars common files. And yeah, here it is for me right here. And I also have my configuration settings for it, uh, which you won't actually have to change anything. You'll have a file next to your JSGME application in the folder that came with it while it was downloaded. That'll say jsgme.ini, and you'll drag that along with the JSGME application. It looks like this when it's finished. It's very easy. So once you have this in here, we are actually going to install the desired mod. There's actually a Discord server with a bunch of modders in it who regularly post new car mods they made for the game. Uh, I will be sure to link this in the description. I have this Audi R18 right here. 
Usually it brings you to a Dropbox page. Hit the download button, direct download. You don't need to save the Dropbox. And there we go. It'll immediately start downloading. It should take a little while. Some modding files are bigger than others. Okay, it's now finished. That did not take long at all, actually. So we're going to go to File Explorer, Downloads, and here it is. Uh, now we're going to open it with our uh, Zip File Manager app that we talked about earlier. And here it is. So it actually comes with a README. Every mod you download will come with a README page. And keep this. Don't delete it or anything because we are going to need this later. So now that you have your actual mod, what you're going to do is you're going to navigate back to the Project Cars common files, open up your mods folder, and you're going to take this Audi R18 TDI, which is the car, you're going to take the cars folder and drag it into the mods folder. It's going to do this, and now we have it in here. So now that you've done that, we're actually going to go to the boot files right here, open it up, we're going to navigate to vehicles, and th basically what all of this is, is the properties for every vehicle in the game. So as you can see, there's, these are all the folders for each car. But we're not actually going to use these. We're actually going to scroll down all the way to vehicle list. We're going to open this, and it's going to open up a notepad document. Keep this open. We're going to need it later. We are going to navigate back to the vehicles folder and scroll up and try to find the physics folder there it is and open up driveline open up the document and we're met with another notepad document and this is basically the coding for all of the cars behavior and like physics if that makes any sense so we're gonna grab this scrolling bar preferably because we don't want to use the mouse scroller because there's a lot of shit in here scroll all the way down to the bottom and leave it here now we're going to go back to the uh, README text that came with the Audi in the folder, and we're going to select this name right here. This is the title for the vehicle, and we're going to select it, copy it, Control C, or you can just you know right click and hit copy. Um, so now we're going to go back to the vehicle list, and it doesn't matter where you put it, but I like to do it in alphabetical order. So I guess it fit about right here. Paste that. You don't want any spaces. Be sure to save. If you don't save it, it's not going to work. Now go back. Open up the README text again. Now we're going to copy this record thing right here. And what this is, is this is the coding for the physics of the car. So we're going to go back to driveline. And right at the very bottom, make a little space for it. We're going to paste it right here, and again, be sure to save. Once again, it will not work if you do not save. So for the final step, we are going to go all the way back to our Project Cars common files, and we're going to scroll down to our JSGME program, open that up, it's going to ask you for permission, we're going to grant it its permission. <laughs> Um, and now you can see our available mods is Audi R18 TDI, the one we just downloaded. And I already have mods in here. This is not what yours is going to look like. Um, your boot files, this right here, is actually going to be on this side with the Audi. But since I already have um, activated mod, it's going to be over on this side. So don't pay attention to this, but I'm going to transfer it back. So this is about what yours would look like, minus all this stuff. And... The order you do this in does actually matter, so be sure to pay attention to this. We go car first, we transfer it to activate it, we grant it access to enable the mod, and next we do the boot files. Ne next we do the boot files, Jesus Christ. And it is, once again, important that you do the boot files after you transfer the Audi, or else it will not work properly. So now we have them both activated. And now all we have to do is check the game to see if it actually worked. Alright, here we are in the game. Let's go to a practice session. Vehicle select. Should be in the alley section. And there you go. 
there's the car right here. It does have kind of a weird PNG image. Like, you can see the other cars have a more clean image, I guess you could say. I'm guessing the the modder doesn't have the same method of getting a PNG image as the devs do, but whatever. You get what you get. Um, you can s you can see it is actually a real car. I didn't just Photoshop it in there or some shit. It is completely real. You can drive it. There's even um, different liveries. These liveries actually came from Project Cars 1. I'm guessing that's also where the modder got the original model for the car for from. Jesus. We'll load it up into a session real quick. And there it is. Interior works too. You really gotta hand it to the modders. They did a really good job. And it doesn't just look good, it also drives really well too. So uh, there you have it. That is my step-by-step -step guide to installing mods to Project Cars 2. You know, I really wish it weren't so convoluting, but sometimes it's just the way things are. I mean, you really gotta give props to the modders in this community though, because they really do a great job with this stuff. Uh, all the cars I've driven have both looked and driven fantastically, and I really am impressed by the attention to detail shown by these guys. Uh, and once again, all the mods and tools showcased in this video will be linked down in the description. If you like this tutorial style of video, then you're actually in luck because I am planning to make more of the type, such as a uh, guide to downloading and installing custom liveries, so be on the lookout for that. But uh, yeah, that really is all I have to say. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, then I wish you luck, and I hope you have a great time exploring the growing collection of mods for this game. Thanks for watching.